Hey, welcome back. This is part four of the world creation tutorial series. We're going to go over just a uh, base inspector from a brand new world and talk about each item within the inspector at the root level, explain what it all does, what you should and shouldn't do, just so you understand exactly what like a, uh, a basic world is made out of. Let's switch over to smooth POV and uh, Prab UI is going to be on again, just so we can show everything here on the belt menu. So we ignore the uh, recording UI there. So we're going to hit new world. I'm going to set this to no one and we're going to go to basic empty and then hit start session. So here we are in a new basic empty world. This is what the basic empty preset gets you. You get a default skybox, which has a sun and this white platform to stand on. I'm going to go ahead and spawn out a developer tooltip. thumbnails there we go and I'm gonna then open up the world route so to do this you grab your developer tooltip equip it open up the hand menu and then just push on the uh, open inspector menu and so here's a root inspector in a brand new world let's go through everything um, start to finish and uh, tell you what each one does so you'll first, first of all notice the root here, and this is technically selectable. I don't recommend doing this ever, or at least trying to avoid it. Uh, it places some of the like master assets for a world up on root, but you don't usually need to touch it. Um, things like the world's icon or icons such as the icons in the hand menu go up there. Next is the user spawner. The user spawner controls how users are spawned within a world. You'll see here that the user spawner has a position in the world, and it starts at zero, zero, zero. It will tie into the spawn points or the spawn areas, which I showed you from the previous video. You'll also see down here a bunch of icons here. This is how um, I recommend that you control some of the things um, on at a world level, such as name badges, icon badges, and the commercial modules as well. I cover this in one of my permissions videos. It'll be part three advanced or part two advanced. I can't remember if it's part three or part two, but this goes through what each of the others do. So I'll link that in the description. Underneath user spawner, you'll see this locomotion module folder. Inside here, you'll see the locomotion modules for a while. This should be part of its own video, maybe uh, several on each one, but you can see here the locomotion modules available for a while. So you see here physical, fly, teleport, and grab. So if I open up my hand menu and I go to the blue option, we can see walk, run with gripping, which is physical. Just briefly, when you select physical, you'll see the name is here. And I could change this to be uh, potato. And then potato would be up there if I, if I refresh them. And I'll show what that is in a moment. But for now, if I cycle through these, you'll see walk, run, fly, teleport, and grab world. I'll cover this in the locomotion tutorial as well, but if you change any of these, go back to the user spawner, hit update locomotion modules, and now you'll see I can change to potato, which is walk run. That's just showing that uh, the name doesn't exactly have to match the slot name here within the, the slot world of the list. Basically, these modules are copied into the user space when you spawn. Beneath that is roles. Roles is completely covered by the permission system. I also don't think there's anything at the root here. There isn't. The next is clipboard importer. This is a slot which handles anything imported from your clipboard. Don't, uh, so don't touch any of these. So don't touch, you uh, You can touch user spawners locomotion modules, but don't, what I mean is don't delete these ones. So don't delete user spawner, don't delete roles, don't delete clipboard importer. Uh, the other one that you should be careful about is assets. So I'm going to skip ahead, and the reason I'm going to skip ahead is I'm covering the ones you should basically are uh, special cased and you shouldn't really touch them um, during normal world building at least. Um, the next one is assets. Assets is like a lookup system for assets within a world. Um, it contains sort of raw copies of certain assets within the world here. So you can see here's um, a VR glove, which this is the uh, this is the standard glove that you'll see on someone who doesn't have an avatar, for example. And here's the standard HMD that you'll see if they uh, don't have an avatar. Everything that you're in a world will um, sort of end up in here. Don't worry about it. Don't directly also put stuff into this folder or delete this folder. Um, just leave it alone. Uh, it will self-manage itself. 
With those out of the way, um, actually there is one more, which is the undo manager. Within the undo manager, you'll see a slot for each user in the world, and then you'll see a list of things that they um, have done. This is controlled by the undo menu. Again, you don't really need to touch it. Don't go in there, don't delete it. It's just there, that's uh, running the undo script for you. You'll also see a holder. Um, the holder is currently holding my camera. So you'll see it, yeah, actually you can't see this because uh, of the clip distance, but there is a um, there is a gizmo on my head now. It's just where the camera isn't within the world. I'm gonna deselect that. With those done, what's left in the world is actually like parts of the world here. So you'll see light. The light is known as the sun, and lighting is something we'll probably cover in the next part. Um, but uh, the default light is a sun, like it just, it's a directional light and it provides light at that angle, so where the blue arrow is pointing for the entire world. You can delete that, it's safe to do so, but then you'd have to handle your own lighting, hence a uh, tutorial on lighting next. You also see a skybox. We edited a skybox in part one of the tutorial series where we changed the skybox with a material gun. This is the component for doing a skybox, and then here is the material for that skybox. When you shoot the sky, it replaces the material here with the material that you shot at the sky. You'll see under here the procedural sky um, material that we used to... Um, I think we used gradient. This is the procedural one. There's a, the gradient one is slightly different. That's the one that you get on a grid space world. Other than that, you'll see a plate. Uh, the plate here is just the, uh, let me make sure I'm in fly mode, it's just the platform that you spawn on. You can feel free to delete it or change it up however you want. That's everything within a world um, when you start. I am now going to go over what I usually do to structure my world going forwards from this, and that is um, I create a, a slot within the world where my stuff goes, and I call this like world. The reason I do this is so that when people open up the Root Inspector, um, it doesn't lag as much because there aren't as many slots at the root. And it's also clear like what is in the world. So if you have a busy time like editing the world and you can then go to the Root Inspector and you can see new stuff that you haven't like situated yet. So I'm gonna do that now. The best way to do that is not to, um, is to create a new child, but don't do that by selecting the root. Again, the root's quite laggy to select. Best way to do that, to set it up, is you open up your hand menu and you go to create new, go to empty object. This just makes a floating empty object within the world and it's uh, under the root here. So if we just reset position, rotation, and scale, just in case, and then I name it world. And now anything I put in the world, I put under this slot here. So say I were to spawn a couple of objects in, so we'll go to, Neos Essentials, 3D Models, and spawn in a couple of things. So that's good biology, actually. So here's a chromosome or two. Um, we can also go to city buildings, would be good, actually. I don't know how big that is. Ah, it's loading it. There we go. I have changed a uh, teleport, which is why I was jumping around a bit there. Hold on, let's go back to fly. So with those items in the world, you'll start to see them fill up this root inspector here. So what I do, like I said, is I drop everything into the world. And then, uh, let's close that as well. And then things look a bit tidier. So when they're in the root inspector, you can see everything's in the world here. Something also I advise is then further breaking down this world slot into more divisions about what you're doing. So here, these are like background scenery. So you might say here, like new child slot. Background. Background. scenery and then you could put all those buildings in there then we might have here science for the the chromosomes i spawned in science there we go 
And this lets you structure a world where um, you can see what's going on. One of the things I want to do for a future video is go through a world that hasn't had this happen and do it and show you how I would go about it and how much clearer it can make the world inspector. So if you have a pretty particular like messy world of Aeneas that you'd like me to go take a look at tidying up and you don't mind me doing that on video, let me know and I can take a look at that world for you. If you keep this, if you keep doing this, then it will become a lot clearer for you to come back to that world and take a look around. Um, as an example, we're going to load into a world where I've done this. I'm going to open up the world browser and we're going to find me, go to my worlds. Let's load into the tea house here. There we go. And open up a root inspector. Let me just turn off the music for a second. There we go. And so here again, you'll see um, that there is a world slot and then everything's under here. This isn't as tidy as I would like, but you can see things like tea stuff. And inside here are all the, all the cups within the world. So uh, that's this cup here. Should also be um, inside tea house fixed is the the model for the world. So this is the uh, the tea house itself. You'll see plate, which is the standard plate. It's just hidden below here. I could probably clean that up, but it's 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 tidy. It's there. There's lights as well. So you'll see all the lights are under here, and I can turn them all off like this. Actually, no, they're hooked up by this. That turns off all the lights. Not sure why that checkbox is going pink when I check it. I'll take a look later. You also see stairs. Stairs are the um, quads that exist within the um, the ramps here on the stairs. And so it's all organized, so I know exactly where everything is. Um, this one could have more organization. Like you can see here, there are two sound resources here. So there's the video, which is the background music, and here is the fountain noise. Um, I might put those under a sound effects um, a slot. And then you'll see here, there's a fog volume and particle system. Those are to do with how the fountain over there looks a bit sort of foggy-like, and there's also steam rising from it. We can uh, put those under like a visual effects folder, and then we know where all the all the particle systems and fog are. I hope that helps in showing how you can organize a world, and also what the um, slots of in a world root are, and uh, how to make sense of them. Here you can see, for example, I added this tea box um, at some point. There's a tea box here that contains tea. Uh, I didn't put that under the root. So I will do that when I, uh, I finish up making tea for this world. I hope that helps. Um, I strongly encourage you that you structure worlds like this. It becomes easier to see things and uh, the root inspector becomes a lot less problematic to open. Um, in a finished world where you allow other people to build as well, the root inspector will then become anything that anyone's added to the world. So if you come in and they've added their own props, their own gadgets that they brought in, such as weapons or... Uh, props, uh, other avatars, etc. They'll be within the world route, easy to find, and easy to clear up, and no one will have any risk of deleting any part of the world because it's here hidden in the world folder, which they won't have to go in necessarily. Next up, we'll do some lighting stuff. Um, lighting's a big topic, but we'll uh, see if we can cover it in one video. Thank you for watching.